Welcome to America's Top Rebbitzins. In the merit of this class, may Hashem wash over all the Jewish people, especially the IDF soldiers, including Lauren Ofri Bat Or, Leah Simcha Bat Manya, Sarah, Liam Van Sarit, and Liach Bat Rinat. Please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to us on the America's Top Rebbitzins YouTube page, or click follow to follow us on your podcasting app so that you are the first to know when an inspiring new episode is posted. I'm very happy to have on today's show, Sunny Levy. Sunny is a seventh degree black belt Taekwondo master. She is also a personal fitness trainer and she teaches martial arts, self defense, strength training, yoga, and kickboxing to women and children. In addition to teaching others how to defend themselves and be physically fit, Sunny also teaches women how to be spiritually fit through her Hit Bodidut Spiritual Boot Camp. Hit Bodidut is personal prayer and it is literally life changing. I personally took Sunny and Bo Didut Spiritual Boot Camp, and I can tell you from personal experience that praying to Hashem, to God, in your own words, deepens your connection to Him in ways that you cannot even imagine. So we are going to get into the details and learn a lot more about Hit Bo Didut today. Thank you so much, Sunny, for being here. Please tell us more about yourself and what you do. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here. Um, so as you said, I, I teach martial arts, fitness, yoga. I'm a mother of six. I live in Arizona. I love hiking. One of my favorite things to do is talk to Hashem. And um, as you mentioned, I've been running these spiritual growth boot camps for the past year and a half. This has been amazing and wonderful to see so many people transform before my eyes. And I'm also an Amuna coach. So I work one-on-one -on -one with people and help them like an Amuna life coach. And that's also extremely powerful. And what is it? So when you say a Muna life coach, what is it that you mean? Um, it's basically coming at life from a faith-based approach to life coaching. And so bringing the light of Amuna and bringing Hashem into everything. So it, it, it's a different way of looking at life and looking at our circumstances. Different, and, and we act differently when we bring Hashem into it and we bring prayer into it and we bring, you know, Amuna into it. We have to understand that whatever we're going through was given to us by Hashem for a purpose. Whereas if you don't look at it that way, it's like, oh, no, like, look what I'm dealing with. There's no reason for this or why and what am I, you know what I mean? So it's just a different approach. And not only um, does it make everything more meaningful, but it, it brings a person closer to Hashem through the process of whatever it is they're going through. I love that kind of like the God centered perspective, because you're right. If you bring God into the picture, you completely change your perception of it. You completely take the same problem and you can look at it with a completely different lens once you bring Hashem into the picture. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I know that you have a really fascinating story about how you personally discovered Hit Bodidut. Hit Bodidut is personal prayer for those who are not familiar with the term. So I wanted to see if maybe you can please share your story with us. Yeah, for sure. So my story started actually a long time ago, which is interesting looking back to see that my story started when I was around six years old. Um, I was in Jewish school. My parents were Bali Chuva and they put, put me into a religious day school. And immediately we started learning about prayer. And the prayer book meant nothing to me. I didn't know a word of Hebrew. I didn't know what was going on. And so I asked my teacher, can I talk to God in my own words? If God is everywhere, as you say, and if God loves to listen to the prayers of children, can I just talk on my own instead of using the prayer book? And she said to me, of course, you can talk to God whenever you want. You still have to learn how to use the prayer book, but you can talk to God as much as you want whenever you want. He will hear you. He listens to children's prayers. He listens to everyone's prayers. So this is when it all started. Um, I remember that day, I was so excited and so inspired. I ran home from school and I couldn't wait to just have my own time with God. And I, I closed the basement door, I sat down there by myself and I really only had one thing that I was asking for. Um, I, I have a disabled older brother who was born blind with severe mental disabilities. And I said, Hashem, you created the whole world and everything in it. This is gonna be so easy for you. Please just make my brother normal. And this was really the beginning of me talking to Hashem. But unfortunately, God did not listen to me. And every day I would check on my brother and see that there was no change. And every day I would come back into the basement and talk to God. And this was the only thing I ever requested. And as time went on, I started to lower the bar. I said, Hashem, okay, at least make him see out of one eye. At least can you make him see in black and white out of one eye? They kept lowering the bar and bargaining and saying, okay, I'll wear long skirts and be nicer to my siblings. I'll wash my hands with that cup in the morning. At least make him stop pinching and screaming so much. Just do something. That's all I'm asking. And after a couple of weeks of no change, I came down to Hashem and I said, I don't know what to make of you. Either you're not real 
and the teachers are lying and this is all just like trying to get us to believe in the tooth fairy or Santa Claus and you're just this made up thing or you're real, but you're mean. And either way, it's not looking good for me. And that was really the end of my relationship with Hashem. And I was so young. And from that day on, I really, I really didn't believe in prayer anymore. I kind of gave up. I became disillusioned at a very young age. And years later, like almost two, almost two decades later, when my father passed away, I was living in Israel. My husband was about tshuva. He was learning in yeshiva. I was a kolel wife. And he was, it was his first time learning. And he was in a place where they were teaching him about heat bodidu, about personal prayer. And he would come home every day and say to me, this is amazing. You've got to try it. You're going to love it. This is awesome. And I was like, you know, I'm so glad that you like it, but it's not for me. Like, I don't need any optional mitzvahs. Like, I'm from enough. I don't need to do anything. And I mean, I was living a religious life, but, and he kept saying, no, I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to love it. And I'm like, no, like, I, I'm so busy, like doing other things, like you enjoy your relationship you, you, with God. I don't need this. But then when my father passed away, like shortly after that, and I was really so sad and the grieving was so much and I, it was just so heavy. And I, I didn't want to just be so depressed all day long. Like I had two little kids and I really couldn't, I didn't know how to handle myself. And again, my husband said, why don't you try talking to Hashem? And I was like, well, at this point, maybe I'm desperate enough that I'll give it a try. Desperate enough. There I am living a religious life and I have no connection to God, which is crazy yeah. because I thought I didn't know that. I didn't really know that. And then I started and I didn't know what he'd voted to was supposed to be like. And I just said, OK, I'm going to take an hour a day when my kids take a nap. I'm going to, you know, he'd voted to mean self seclusion. I'm going to seclude myself with God. I'm going to close my bedroom door and sit there for an hour and tell God how I feel. I'm going to mourn my dad and see what happens. And it was very awkward for me at first because I realized, whoa, I hadn't talked to God like this since I was like six years old. And now it's like 20 years later, more than 20 years later. And it's so weird. Like, this is so weird. Like, first of all, is Hashem even here? Do I really believe in Hashem? Yes, I'm living this life, but like, it makes you question yourself. And like, you really have to come face to face with where you're at and where your faith is and what your beliefs are. And, you know, it was very eye-opening for me to sit there every day and talk to Hashem and express my feelings to him. But I have to say, every day I left that room after the hour, I felt slightly more comforted. I felt heard. I felt validated. I felt seen by Hashem. And as the days went on of me showing up and talking to Hashem, I started to learn about myself that my faith in God was very, very small and very weak. And that I had so much faith in my father. My father was like this, amazing, can do no wrong, always has my back, always there for me. But Hashem, not so much. And, you know, that's one of the amazing things out of so many about Heat Bode Dut is that it's like what prayer is, it changes us. It's a, it's a Heat Bode Dut, like the Heat Palel, is a, it's a reflexive verb. The Heat Palel, to pray, is something we do to ourselves. And prayer is meant to change us. And slowly I started to feel myself changing. I started to re recognize I, my faith is weak. I don't want this. Hashem, help me believe in you more. Help me see you as I should. Help me expand my, my idea of you. And then what started to happen also was instead of being so brokenhearted and sad every single day about my dad passing, I somehow suddenly started to think I'm so grateful for the years I had him. Thank you, Hashem, for giving me my dad. It was a completely different perspective. You know what I'm saying? Instead of focusing on the lack, I was focusing on the blessing of the years I did have him, on the relationship I did have with him. And I didn't consciously do that. It started to happen from talking to Hashem. So, and this was really the beginning. And I never thought that this would be something that I would continue. I thought, okay, I'll do it for the first year of mourning. I'll, I'll see how long I can go. It. But it's been 18 years. It's my dad's 18th yort, yort site next Sunday. Wow. And, I ha and I haven't stopped. I've done it every day since. And that's really how I got started. And, and since then, like just not letting it go and continuing to do it and learn about it, read about it. I, I've, it's, it's just been the most transformative thing for me and the most amazing thing on so many levels. So now I'm just very passionate about sharing it with others because I see all the benefits, you know? I love that. I love the way that, you know, you started it out when you were little and it wasn't for you. I mean, you, you were young. What did you understand? You know, you only had a limited exactly. understanding. But as you as you matured, as you like grew into a woman and really, really had the opportunity to develop your relationship with Hashem and really strengthen that connection through personal prayer, that really like I can see, okay, knowing you, I can see how that changed your life. 
you know, and I really want to get into that because I feel like, you know, especially now, you know, we're recording um, this podcast just a few weeks after um, the terrorist group Hamas attacked um, the, the, pe- the Israeli people within uh, right right by the border of Gaza in Israel. And it was a huge massacre, it was a huge pogrom. And a lot of people are really, really trying to process the information. And really, some of them are just not being able to do to do that. And just some people are even questioning God, like, why did he do it? These were such good people that were killed. And they were good people that were killed. And so like today, I really want to get get try to get into it and try to see if we can make sense out of this through through the practice of hit to dude. Um, and I know that you, that you teach the hit to dude spiritual boot camp for women, which I took part of that I mentioned earlier. And that was really amazing. Um, it really changed my relationship with Hashem and it deepened my connection with him. It really, really did. I don't think that uh, I can't even do it adequate justice by saying when you have that connection with Hashem, when you have that conversation, when you're just talking, not reading prescribed prayers from a prayer book. When you're just having a conversation with Hashem, as if he's there, like we're doing right now, just talking to a friend, just talking to somebody, it it changes you. It changes you. You get you get insights into problems. You get solutions to problems that you would never have thought about on your own if you were just sitting there, just thinking about them in your head. Um, so I really do feel so much closer to Hashem as a result of your class. So first of all, I want to thank you so much. Thank um, you. Yes. And with all the chaos going in the world right now, personal prayer is so important. So I wanted to start from the beginning. Can you please explain to us what exactly is Hitbo Didut and what are the different steps involved? Because there are different steps. For sure. So Hitbo Didut is, it it refers to personal prayer. The word itself, the Hitbo Deid, means self-seclusion. And as as I said before, so this is a time where we carve carve out time to be with Hashem to share our hearts, to deepen our relationship, to strengthen our faith, to reflect on ourselves, to grow, to pray, to express gratitude. And the beauty of it is that there's no really one way to do it. Whereas, you know, with formal prayer, you got to read these words, stand up, face east, sit down, bang your chest, do this. It's very like, it has to be, but this is very free. And, and, And it's beautiful because everyone's soul is unique and everyone will express their soul differently to Hashem. And so, there's no right way, there's no wrong way, but there are. there is a template and there is a template which is very, very helpful, especially when you're getting started to give yourself some structure because if you just show up, you're, and a lot of people are like, well, do I just show up and say like, hi God, like, what's up? Like, what do I do? You know what I mean? Like they don't really know where to begin. Right. So there's a structure that we follow, which is very helpful. And it's the same format of the Shimona Esrei. And that is divided into three parts. So we start with gratitude. The second part is self-reflection. Some people might say tshuva or chashbo nefesh. We'll talk about each one. And the third part is request. So those are the three main parts. But even with these categories, there's still still more. Like we still want to be talking to Hashem, as you said, like we're talking to a best friend. You know, like expressing our deepest feelings, our goals, our ambitions, our fears, whatever is on our mind. We don't want to hold anything back because if you think about it, if you want to be really close with somebody, the more you share, the closer you're going to be. And if you want to be really close with somebody, you're going to carve out time to spend time with them every day, whether it's, hey, let's have a coffee date every day. Let's take a walk together every day for 10 minutes. Let's talk on the phone for 20 minutes. This is what we this is what he voted to do is it's not um, randomly talking to God throughout the day. Like I've spoken to people who are like, well, I do it. I ask Hashem for a parking space when I'm driving. I'm like, that's not really heat to do. It's great that you are talking to Hashem and think to ask him for something. But this is a specific carved out chunk of time where you have committed yourself daily as much as possible. Like I'm going to meet with Hashem at this time in this place, if possible, same time, same place. Um, that's not required, but it, it obviously helps. And I'm going to go through all these things for sure. I'm going to express gratitude for all of the things in my life. And in doing that, that helps me connect everything I have to him. It strengthens my faith. It strengthens my belief that he loves me. That strengthens my love for him. It helps us become more humble, more grateful, more spiritually aware. Um, From there, we go into self-reflection, which is where we really ask ourselves questions about who we are and what, how are we living our life and what are we all about? This can be um, a little bit hard. Not everyone wants to look at themselves but this is where we really grow. This is where we, we, we start to see ourselves become more self-aware. And from there, we can make change in our character. So that's self-reflection. And then request, it's that we there's nothing too big and there's nothing too small. This is the time where we ask Hashem for all of our needs 
spiritually, physically, not only our own needs, but for the Jewish people, the world at large, our family, friends, you know, we pray for ourselves and others. That's the basic structure. Obviously, there's so much more depth, but that's a good, I feel like that's a good starting point. That, that is a good starting point. And I know, that, so you teach um, the gratitude, the self-reflection and the request in your level one hit Bo Dude spiritual boot camp. I know that you also have a level two and level three. So I was wondering if maybe you could tell us like, what do you do in the level two and the level three? And this way, maybe we can flesh out the gratitude, self-request and um, self-reflection and request a little bit more so people can have a deeper understanding of what each of those mean. Yeah, for sure. So level so level one is really just like, he'd go to do 101, like let's get consistent, learn how to do it, set up a daily routine for yourself. Level two, I call illuminating the darkness. And this is where we, we go into something dark, a challenge, a trauma, something very painful. And we work specifically with bringing godliness into that and healing it at the root. It's, it's uh, a little bit hard to talk about, but because gratitude, really, it's really a deeper level of gratitude where we're able to express gratitude for the challenges. And where we're able to get to a place where we have the faith, we have to work on it, we have to pray for it. We have the faith that even the hard things that Hashem brings us for a purpose and ultimately for our good and that everything Hashem does is kind and merciful and compassionate and loving. So if he gave me this challenge and this darkness, it, it's really dark and hard for me. I can get to a place through Heat Bodidu where I can turn this darkness into a bright shining light, where instead of it being this burden, this it can be a, a joyful thing. And I know it sounds crazy, but it's like alchemy. It's really like a very transformative process. Spiritual boot, boot, boot camp number three, I call embodying your faith. And this is where we take deep ideas of Amuna and we try to get them from our head into our heart and our, to our body, to every cell of our body. We do this through workshops where we speak and then following it up with a workshop where we move. So I lead like a yoga style class and we bring these ideas as much as we can into our body through breath work, meditation, movement, and some personal prayer during the class itself. And this is really cool because, you know, they say the farthest distance in the world is from our head to our heart. Like yeah. we can know all of this stuff, but the litmus test of if we're living it is like, how do we feel? Like, is our anxiety, like we, we, we shouldn't have, like our anxiety will be less, our joy will be higher. We'll have more inner peace. And if we don't, then clearly our amuna isn't deep in, deep, deep, deep in us. So we want to try to bring it into our body. And I actually have level four, which is called the Black Belt Club. Oh, wow. And that's for, yeah. Yeah, I just started that one for people who finished level three. And it's like, it's kind of like, let's let's maintain what we have and keep getting stronger. And I call it the Black Belt Club because as a martial artist, you know, a lot of people think, well, the whole point is to get a black belt and quit. But a, a real martial artist understands not at all. The black belt is, yes, it's a level of mastery, but it's just the beginning. Once you're a black belt, there's 10 more levels. Now that you're a black belt, let's go. Now you finally have a foundation and you can really start training hard. And I feel like spiritually too, like there's no end. We can't say, I do heat to do it every day, so I'm good now. It's like, there's always more. It's a continuum. So we can keep growing stronger, getting closer to Hashem, deepening our faith more and more. I love that. I really love that because I think it's so important, especially now people are struggling with so much. There are illnesses. There's the death of loved ones. There's this war going on in Israel. And then people have their regular everyday anxiety, depression, like issues within themselves that they're trying to work out. And, you know, I hate to say this, but sometimes people see no way out. Like if they're really in a deep situation, you know, it could be finances, it could be relationship, you know, whatever it is, everybody has their own particular challenge. So I really, you know, I want to see if we could maybe even even flesh this out deeper, maybe even with an example, you know, of how we do this. Um, and before we go into the example, I just want to say, I know that you do hit Bodhi for an hour every day. We don't have to start off because that could be intimidating for somebody. You know, how am I going to do this for an hour? Like people won't even start. Like that's really intimidating. So I just want to clarify that the hit Bodhi the, the personal prayer does not have to be for an hour every single day. Absolutely. I tell people, start with a minute, two minutes, three minutes. Take what's rational for you. Take what's realistic, sustainable. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Like start small and build, build, build from there. But like, it's really about just showing up. It's really about saying, Hashem, I want a relationship with you. I'm going to give it two minutes a day to talk to you from my heart. Okay. And that's, that's fine. It does. It's, it's really okay. Like you can build slowly up to it over time or not, you know? Right. Yeah. In the boot camp, the, the motto is like a day doesn't go by where I don't talk to Hashem. Even if it's for a minute, even, you know, everyone has a has to make a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, and a plan D, depending on, like, 
you know, like if you can't do plan A, which is like, ideally, like I'd like to do, let's say even 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, whatever it is, then they go to plan B, which is all right, six minutes, that doesn't work out. Don't worry. It's not an all or nothing. Do plan C four minutes. That doesn't work out. Oh my gosh. Okay. Do one minute plan D before you fall asleep at night under the covers. Like just don't go to bed without talking to Hashem. Right. Which is exactly, I, I'm so glad that you, that you pointed that out again, because that just really uh, goes to show what the essence of this is. The essence of the hitbo to do is to strengthen your connection with Hashem, you know? Yes. And some days, like even like you said, you're talking to your best friend. Sometimes you're in such a rush and you have to get the kids here and there and you have guests coming and dinner and this and that. You And let's say you talk to her every day. Sometimes you can't talk to her for 30 minutes every day. You just can't. Some days you can. But other times it's just like, hi, yeah, I just wanted to check in to say hello and that's it. And it could literally be a two minute conversation. Just want to make sure you're OK. And that's it. And it's the same thing with, with Hashem. Some days you can really you're you're spilling your guts like you're pouring your heart out. It's like, you know, everything comes out. And other times you're just. Maybe you're just not in that frame of mind and it's just like, okay, hi, Hashem, I'm just checking in two minutes. Here's what's going on just to maintain some form of connection um, with him. Um, so yes. And so what, so reflecting on my experience, in the boot camp, I remember when I started it, I, so I did the level, the level one boot camp. We started with, um, 15 minutes. I did 15 minutes a day of hit to dude with all the three components, with the gratitude, with the self-reflection and with the request. So let's see if maybe we can go um, deeper into each one of them, taking them one at a time and really like fleshing them out. And like I was mentioning before, maybe we can even take an example. Um, if you have an example in mind, um, you know, and we could take that and we can um, talk about gratitude with a particular example in mind. Okay. So at first we say like, how do you get deeper into gratitude? Is that what you mean? Like, yes. yes. Okay. So there's so many ways. Um, I think if, you, if you're just starting out one, and I mean, by the way, I still do this. I, I, I really connect to this, but like, I start with my body. I start with the top of my body and work my way down. And I thank Hashem for every single thing that I could think of on the inside and on the outside, meaning my brain, my balance, my memory, everything on the inside that I can swallow, my thyroid, my heart beating, my my lungs, you know, my balance, my personality, and then my senses, my eyes, that, that I could see out of both eyes. Thank you, Hashem, that I can hear out of both ears. And I literally stop to, to look, stop to listen, to breathe, to swallow. I go through, thank you for every tooth. Thank you I can move every finger. Thank you, I can move my wrists. Thank you, I can move my head, my neck. Thank you, I can move my shoulders. I move everything. I flex every muscle. I thank Hashem that I can do this. I know as someone who works with kids kicking cancer and as a personal trainer who's worked with people with MS and other types of um, diseases that not everybody can move their body. Not everybody has all their limbs. This is a gift from Hashem and we should not take it for granted. And it's very important that we connect our abilities to Hashem and that we thank him. There's no guarantee that we're going to have it tomorrow. We Let's be grateful for what we have. And so I like to go through the, my whole body. And then I thank Hashem for the people in my family, for my house, for all the things, like even the food, every single drawer that has socks and clothing, everything in the pantry, the spice drawer, all of this is because of Hashem. Every book on the bookshelf that I have a car that I can drive, like every single thing that I can think of, I like to thank Hashem. Um, and we talk about in the boot camp going back in time and thanking Hashem for things from our childhood, from our past, and going back to times where we never put Hashem in the picture to sort of bring more emuna and gratitude into our whole being. Um, so that's that's one example of gratitude. A deeper level of gratitude is being able to think, as I said, thank Hashem for the things that are hard with the knowing that Hashem brought that to you. Just as he brought you the good, he brought you the difficult thing too but out of love and out of purpose. And an example of that, I would say is, I, I really have a lot because people, once they get this, they, they go ahead and do this. I just had a woman say to me that she's in level two boot camp. She said to me, she just had a miscarriage. Now she said, normally, if, if she wouldn't have been doing all this work, she would have been broken, obviously, but very, very hard on her. She'd be very sad, freaking out and just kind of crushed. She said that she immediately went to gratitude. She immediately went to a place of, thank you, Hashem, I trust that this soul just needed to come into my body for a certain amount of time. Thank you, Hashem, that this is the way. And she she avoided like such heartache. And when she told me this, I, I was like crying. I'm like, I can't, but this is beautiful. Like, this is amazing that she was able to get, you know, bring, transform herself instead of falling into sadness and depression and why me or anger? Why'd you do this to me, Hashem? Thank you, Hashem. Thank you. If this is what you 
decided for me that this is what's best for me. This is what's best for the fetus. This is what's best. And thank you. And 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 as I teach, like and from Rabbi Shalom Arosh, these are his words. We have to put our emuna above our logic. Sometimes our logic can't. It, it's it's we can't make sense of it. Right. And if we try, we get trapped and we get upset and we can't find our way out. So it's a matter of lowering and humbling ourselves and saying, you know what, my, I'm not dealing with my logic here because my brain won't find a way out. I have to let the Amuna rise up and trust that this is this is from Hashem and there's a purpose and there's a good reason here. So that was one thing, it was, which is was amazing um, for in terms of gratitude that I can share, just that that person's story. I um, love that. And I, really, I really appreciate you sharing that because th- I think that's where people get stuck because I, I'm familiar with the teachings that you're talking about with Rabbi Shalom Arush and he has a, um, uh, a concept, say thank you and see miracles. And that really means also saying thank you for the difficult things. Thank you that I'm bankrupt. Like you said, thank you that I had the miscarriage. Thank you that I'm struggling in this relationship. Thank you for whatever that 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 yucky stuff that you're struggling with is. And that's the last thing that you want to do. When you're struggling with something so hard, the last thing that you want to do is say thank you for it. You just want to wait out of it. You want to say, no, I don't want it. Just get me out of this. Give me like salvation. The last thing you want to do is just to stare that thing in the face and just say, thank you, Hashem, for it. And I just want to bring into play because you were saying, Amuna, I just want to just shed a light on this because because I know how hard it is it is to do it to say thank you for something that's so hard for you because I've done it so I'm, I'm speaking from experience like I'm being authentic authentic and genuine here like I want people to know like when you're struggling with something hard and you're saying thank you for this hard thing you're bringing Amuna into the picture like you were saying earlier you're bringing that faith that you that you have in God that there is a God number one that there is a God that that he has a purpose for everything. You may not understand what that purpose is. You may not understand why you're going through this really, really, really difficult situation that you, if you wrote the script, you definitely would not have written it this way. You don't understand why you're going through the situation. But number three, that you know it's for the best. And that's what really encapsulates Amuna. So I really wanted to, to, to bring that to the forefront and highlight that because you can really, really address those issues in the gratitude section of the personal prayer, like right at the forefront. Right. Absolutely. It's true. It's very, very hard to do. And it's especially hard to do if you haven't been working your way there by trying to build your amuna. So to try to just do it like under fire, like in the moment without having been working on it and praying for it and trying to strengthen your faith that things are good, even if they don't seem good, it's, it's, it makes it even harder, but still it's hard. It's still very hard. It's, very it takes hard. real work, but that's where the growth is for sure. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up. It's not easy. And I, and I definitely don't mean to make it sound easy and yeah, it's, it's real work. It's, it's, it's real spiritual growth right there to be able oh, to, sure. to, yeah. And and it's something, by the way, that we have to pray for. We, we even have to pray that we should be able to get to a place where our faith can be at that level, where we can, where we can trust that because we don't want to be doing lip service. Keep Bodhi Dude is not about faking it. We're not trying to say the right thing. God knows our heart. And if we're not feeling it, we have to say, I wish that I could thank you for this. I know I should, but I can't because it hurts so much and I can't wrap my mind around it. And so we have to keep asking Hashem to help us get to that place spiritually where we can trust him enough and, and, you know, be able to thank him. It's not natural at all. Exactly. A hundred percent. It's above nature. Yeah. It's I like above it. nature, which is why we get, which is why it can bring miracles because miracles are above nature. So it's exactly. I love that you pointed that out because it's so true because miracles above nature. And when you're thanking for something that you really find it difficult to thank for, then, then you really open yourself up for that miracle to come in. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so that was gratitude. Now, self-reflection. I know a lot of people, I remember in our group, a lot of people were struggling with this. Like, what's self-reflection? How do I do it? Like, do I reflect on myself that I'm a patient person or a good person or not? Like, how, can you flesh out a little bit for us self-reflection and how we could really, really do it to the maximum? Sure. So some basic questions that we can ask ourselves in this chunk of time is like, how have I been in my thought, speech, and action? And really take a real look. How have I been doing in my thought, speech, and action? And usually just sitting with that, something will rise up. We may be like, yeah, you know what? I've been falling short short a little bit there. I could do better in that one. And we start to see where we may, where there's room for growth. Um, another good question is, how have I been in my relationships? And we have three main relationships. Relationship between man and man, man and God, and man and self. So how have I been between me and other people? People in my close circle. No, how have I been with my relationship with God? What is that looking like? How, even how's my faith? That's that's important too. Like, have I been 
not trusting God, you know, there's a lot of questions we can ask ourselves within that one. And how am I to myself? Because th this isn't only about like, are you following every single mitzvah? It's like, how am I, how am I treating myself? Am I drinking coffee, like late at night, staying up too late, like having a hard day the next day? Am I too much on the internet? And then I'm stressed out and I can't be a good mom. Am I not taking care of my health? Am, am I treating myself with love and respect the way that I should? And it's being real with where I am in my life right now. And and getting like Hashem wants the best for me. I gotta take care of myself too. Like I'm, it also matters. It may not be one of the 613 mitzvahs that you should uh, go to bed on time, but let's be real. I gotta look at my lifestyle. What, what choices am I making? You know what I mean? So it's 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 big. It's it's looking at the whole of us. I like say something which maybe sounds crazy, but I feel like I say like it's like standing in front of a mirror, which is actually a magnifying glass, totally naked, and being like, I'm gonna take a real look at myself. From all angles, I'm going to try to find the blind spots, the things I normally don't want to, don't even want to even think about, and look at myself and say, "Where am I? What am I doing with my life, with my time? What am I really all about? What am I chasing after? What do I think about? What drives me? Is it materialism? Like, what do, do you know? I mean, really asking hard questions to ourselves, and but not for the sake of beating ourselves up. This is where people can can get lost, like. It's only for the sake of growth and it's for the sake and, and, and it's to be it's to be done with so much appreciation and gratitude that Hashem allows us the opportunity to self-correct and to do tshuva and to change ourselves and to turn everything negative into something positive, like to compost ourselves, you know. So the, the point is to try to find those areas and then we and then we go into request, like Hashem, help me, help me change this trait about myself. Like I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be a person who's jealous, who gossips, who whatever. Like, I need help. I need your divine help. I can't do it alone. And recognizing that, like, it's going to take Hashem's help to get us to change ourselves and, and to pray for that. 100%. Yes. Wow. I love it. Thank you for, for breaking that down. Because in the self-reflection, you really can get lost. But I love it when, when you say, when you're concentrating on how you show up in your relationship, your relationship to yourself. Am I taking care of myself or am I beating myself up? How am I treating myself? How am I treating my my husband, my friends, my kids, my parents, you know, those close to me? And also, what's my relationship with Hashem? Do I have a relationship with Hashem? You know, and how, how can I strengthen that more? And like, how do you show up for Hashem? You know, that's also just really great self-reflection questions. So that's, it's it's good to keep us on point, especially in that aspect. And then the last part of the, the hit to do that, that we were talking about is request. So we have the gratitude, we have the self-reflection, and then the request. So it, this is the part, I guess, where you can, when you, where you can ask for help, or what do we do um, in the request part? Yeah. So we ask for whatever we need and whatever we want. And we ask, we ask for our spiritual needs. It, um, you know, we, we, we don't have to, okay. It's, it's, it's said that we should ask for our spiritual needs first, but if you're just starting out, just ask for whatever you want and don't feel like, oh, I shouldn't ask that, or that's too petty or that's too material. Like Rebbe Natan, who's Rebbe Nachman's student once was, did not have a button on his shirt. And it said that Rebbe Nachman said, you're missing a button. You should ask Hashem for the button. Like even for a button. And so we, we shouldn't think like, ah, like this is too big. This is too small. We should ask Hashem for whatever it is that we need and want. Um, and when it comes to our spiritual needs, like we, we really have so many. I think a lot of times people are very focused on the physical, of course, but really the spiritual is so important. Like people don't understand that it's spiritual to be happy, that it's a mitzvah to be happy, that happiness is holiness. So one thing we should daven for is our own happiness. Our own, you know, our own peace of mind, the for our faith, for ourselves to have a close relationship with Hashem, to desire to do good. Like we should be davening every day for for ourselves to overcome any bit of sinasfinam, any bit of hatred we may have buried inside, and to look to see, do, am I guilty of this? Because this is what, especially now with what's going on in the world, but we're taught that if if that's why the base Hamikdash was destroyed for baseless hatred and it hasn't been rebuilt, that means we haven't fully fixed that yet. So everyone has a little bit in them. They can daven for help for Hashem to correct that um, and for the nation as a whole. I mean, there's so many things, especially now, it's daven for Mashiach, yes. the rebuilding of the Beis HaMikdash, yes. for, I mean, peace and safety. But, um, and of course, yeah, every, everything that we need, even if it's like a remodeled bathroom, like people like should ask Hashem for everything. <laughs> <laughs> So, so along those lines, it was interesting because I know that we mentioned it um, in our Hit Bodidut uh, group that we had, um, that if you have a particular challenge in your life that you really want Hashem, that you really want God to help you with, 
if you pray for someone else who's in a similar situation, that you will get answered first. So I wanted you to to please talk about that if you could, what that means and how we should be praying for others during our own personal hit Wow. So that's a great question. So our sages uh, say that whoever asks for compassion from for someone else and they need the same thing, they're going to be answered first. So this is almost like a spiritual tactic, a request tactic in a way. Um, although we have to really mean it. We have to truly care about the other person. If we show that we care about somebody else, like that's what Hashem wants is that we love each other and care about each other. So then we can, you know, they say like, we'll get our needs met too. Um, so I think that's, that's a, that's very important. And we all know people around us who need prayer, right? Oh yeah. Like, like our sages say, Hashem didn't create tzedakah, the mitzvah of tzedakah, and then create poor people. He created poor people so that we would give tzedakah, you know? And so the people that we see around us who need, who need things, who need a refua, who need whatever it is that they need, we should be looking for that and, and praying for them. Um, and whenever we have tried to have mercy and compassion on others, it, Hashem will also have mercy and compassion on us. I really like that. I, and I've, I've read many, many times that this has worked in so many different situations. Like one situation that sticks out in my mind is somebody, let's say, who's having trouble getting pregnant. You know, somebody who's been married for many, many years and just for whatever reason has difficulty getting pregnant. And then they also have a friend who's in a similar situation, you know, also having difficulty getting pregnant. Sometimes they even have um, set up prayer groups. You pray for me, I pray for you. And we're both praying for each other to, to have a baby. I'm praying for you to have a baby. You're praying for me to have a baby. And we're really, really davening for each other to have a baby. And I, I know, I know for a fact that it's happened. Then both people get end up getting pregnant. You really, the power of prayer, it, it cannot be, it cannot be overstated. You know, I really, really can't stress it enough. P the power of prayer for yourself to praying for your own personal needs and also the power of prayer to pray for your friend, to pray for your husband, your children, you know, a mother's prayer, a mother's prayer for her children. I mean, you don't get any more powerful than that. You know, it's really, really, really strong. And now we're at a time where we as Jews are praying for Kalal Yisrael for all of our, you know, so I live, I live in New York. I don't live in Israel, but here we're all praying for all the people who got injured in Israel and for the hostages that were taken. And with collective prayer, like I genuinely, genuinely believe that, as we increase prayer, that will have an outcome. It will have an effect on the outcome of bringing back, hopefully, hopefully the hostages, as many alive as possible, and as healing just the Jewish people as a whole, as a whole consciousness, as a whole people. It really, we we really need a lot of prayer right now. Sure, so yeah. true. Yeah. Um, so we all love to hear true stories of transformation. I, and I, I feel like whenever I look at social media, there are always the before and the after pictures. You have the people who have lost weight and you have the pictures when they were a little bit heavier and now they're lighter. They lost 50 pounds. They lost 100 pounds. They look amazing. And those physical transformations are so easy to see because we can look at old photos and recent photos and compare the two. They're physical transformations. You look before, you look after, you can see the transformation. But spiritual transformations are so much harder to see because there's no, you can't take a picture of it, you know? That's why it's so important that we talk about them. They're before, this is the way that I was before. This is the way that she was before. I now look at me, look at her, look at them afterwards. And I was wondering, maybe since, you know, you, you've done so many of these uh, beautiful spiritual boot camps, maybe you have a transformational, spiritual transformation story or two to share with us that you happen to see as a direct result of Hit Bodidut, of personal prayer. Yes, that's such a good question. And it's true, we don't see it physically. So yeah, and I, I do have a lot of stories. Um, just a couple recent things is that some people who have said to me with, with everything going on in Israel, if they hadn't been doing this, he'd do it. If they hadn't started it a few months ago already, they'd be a complete mess right now. Yeah. They, they, their old self, they would be in panic mode, freaking out. They said that they feel like that this was the 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 cure before the plague, the cure before the maka, they said. Like they, they did this before it started and now they are able to ground themselves and stay calm and feel connected to Hashem, even, even though they normally know they would have been, that this would have torn them apart and made them so, so scared. So that's that's like a mini transformation, which a couple people have said to me. And then from the process of really, it's usually from the illuminating the darkness where I hear major, major stories. So um, one was about a woman who stopped talking to her mother and her relationship with her mother was very bad. And after doing all this work on it and bringing Amuna into it and Hashem into it, she was able to reframe things in her mind and look at everything differently and bring the light of Hashem into it to the point where she was able to 
call her mother and make peace with her mother, which she never, she thought she was going to die with, without talking to her mother again. And now she and her mother have a relationship. It's not the best relationship, but they're talking. She called her before Shabbos. It's like, th that's a big deal. She didn't think that she was, it, she never expected to talk to her mom again. And through this work, she was able to, you know, see where Hashem was in it and bring Hashem in it more and more in her mind and make changes in her life. Um, different woman, major fear of um, flying, like like horrible fear of flying, was able to do all this work on herself with Hashem, bring it to prayer, bring faith to the situation, and able to overcome this like very, very deep fear. Um, another woman said that she 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 really didn't have confidence you know she really and and through her heat bodedut and finding hashem and this connection she was able to do something very big for herself which was go back to college and get a degree where she never believed she could do anything like that like she kind of gave up on herself in life and this gave her a whole new i don't know like a whole new spirit like like it woke something in her and because you know one of the things we learn about is that having faith in god isn't like having a muna isn't one dimensional. It's not only faith in God. There's four components to it. There's faith in the Torah, faith in the in our tzaddikim. There's faith in Hashem, but there's also faith in her in ourselves. Right. And we have to realize Hashem created us and gave us potential and abilities. And the more we can actually tap into Amuna, the more we can start to be close to ourselves and believe in ourselves again. And so it was amazing to see her kind of like almost like you know come up from the ashes and be a person again self-care and take care of herself and have goals and do things where before that, like she had given up on life and on herself. She was like a rag, you know, like, I'm not going to do, do this. And, and she was able to really pick herself up. And, and that's very beautiful. So these are just some examples of what, you know, is, what can happen. It is beautiful. And it is also powerful. And, you know, it's transformative. Like people really grow as people from doing good bow to do. It's really, really transformative. Yeah. So, well. Really well, thank you. Thank you so much, Sunny, for joining us on America's Top Robinsons. It was so great to have you with us. And hopefully now people can at least start implementing Hitbo to do so they can see their own transformations in their lives. So in the merit of this class, may Hashem watch over all the Jewish people, especially the IDF soldiers, including Lauren Ofri ben Or, Leah Simcha Manya Sara, Liam Ben Sarit, and Lilach Badwina. Thank you so much again. Thank you for having me.